We spoke about omega-3 fatty acids last week. Today, we will touch on omega-6, which like omega-3 are polyunsaturated, the most common being linoleic acid, conjugated linoleic acid, as well as arachidonic acid. Linoleic acid not to be confused with the omega-3 alpha linolenic acid. High omega-6 intake is the leading culprit behind many chronic diseases we are suffering from due to our modern diets and lifestyles, especially heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes. In a natural human diet, we would obtain a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s as the animal foods and plant foods we consume contain that ratio. Granted, they are of wild quality. Now, in a standard American diet, people are getting 18 to 19 times the amount of omega-6 than they are getting omega-3. And the problem isn't that a food necessarily contains omega-6 fats, it's the unnaturally high amount, specifically linoleic acid which is very prone to oxidation. The main sources of linoleic acid in a standard American diet are vegetable seed oils, nuts and seeds, as well as anything that contains those products. So just like Americans are consuming soybean oil and all of these vegetable seed oils, so are factory farm chicken, pork, cattle, resulting in high omega-6 levels in their flesh. And processed foods typically do contain vegetable seed oils as well, you know, especially fried restaurant foods. Cattle metabolize corn and soy differently than pigs and chickens, so their meat isn't as high in omega-6, but the animals are just as sick. I'm sure you've seen just about everyone in the nutrition community demonize these vegetable seed oils. From keto diet pushers to carnivores, even vegans are putting these machine lubricants as the culprit for all of the issues we're suffering from. But what's hypocritical is you'll see those same people that are demonizing vegetable seed oils say that supermarket bacon is okay, that it's okay to consume nuts and seeds, which doesn't make sense as consuming either of these foods will alter your omega-6 to omega-3 ratios in your body to inflammatory proportions. Basically, you are what you eat. When you consume unnatural levels of linoleic acid, the body starts recognizing that extra linoleic acid as an invader. Body starts attacking it, trying to remove it, resulting in incredible amounts of oxidative stress in the arteries, organs, essentially all tissues in the body. Many of the cells in your body are made up of fat and you don't want this to be inflammatory toxic linoleic acid. If you want an in-depth explanation of why linoleic acid is the true cause of heart disease, check out my heart disease video. So the primary foods to avoid are obviously vegetable seed oils, you know, large amounts of nuts or seeds, factory farm meats, as well as eggs. You know, in addition to those, you know, restaurant foods, processed foods, fried foods are things you certainly want to stay away from. So once we understand why linoleic acid is so dangerous and what foods to avoid, it really makes you question the motives of these people that are saying factory farmed meat is okay. You know, that doesn't even consider the agrochemicals, the herbicides, the pesticides, and the fungicides used to raise those animals. This omega-6 is just one aspect of it. Then we have conjugated linoleic acid, which is found exclusively in animal products and has been proven to have many health benefits. There are 28 different types of CLA that each have their own individual beneficial mechanism in the body. And this fatty acid is significantly higher in grass-fed animals. Not only that, you know, yes, grain-fed meat has lower CLA, but grain-fed meat also has higher amounts of linoleic acid, the bad omega omega-6. CLA has been shown to alleviate non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in rats, whereas its evil plant brother, linoleic acid, is actually required for the development of fatty liver. Animal form heals, plant form kills. CLA improves overall metabolism, resulting in weight loss, has been shown to be preventative against lifestyle diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. More importantly, CLA has been linked to gene expression, you know, regulating many cell processes in our bodies, and we see the same occurrence with various fat-soluble vitamins such as A, D3, and K2, including very important minerals like magnesium. And the lack of animal foods in most diets 
result in people missing bioavailable forms of these nutrients, which explains our modern poor health in a way. Arachidonic acid is another omega-6 fatty acid that is exclusive to animal foods. Our body does not make this, and the brain requires a certain amount of arachidonic acid, just like it requires a certain amount of DHA to function every day. I'm surprised no one has really brought this up yet. I've spoken about it in the past in the context of vegan nutrient deficiencies, and I haven't even seen a vegan arachidonic acid supplement on the market yet. So arachidonic acid will be contained in high quality animal foods, but it will actually be higher in lower quality animal foods because those animals are being fed soy and corn, which is omega-6 dominant. And I'm under the belief that most people are consuming far too much arachidonic acid, with the exception of vegans, where they're not getting any at all. Something like chicken salad with mayonnaise or bacon and eggs for breakfast would be exceptionally high in arachidonic acid. And there are downsides to consuming too much arachidonic acid, one of them being an imbalanced appetite due to disruption of the endocannabinoid system. Now, people think they are saving money by purchasing feedlot animal foods, but they would probably eat significantly less if they were consuming quality animal foods as the nutrients are higher and they are not disrupting this reward system in the body through high omega-6 intake. Not only that, you're going to avoid doctor's visits, supplements, and all the other nonsense you're consuming as a result of your poor feedlot beef diet. So overall, we obviously want to avoid omega-6 fatty acids in significant amounts. If you follow a quality whole foods diet, the only concerns you really have are consuming too many nuts or seeds. And macadamia nuts are okay from what I've seen, but either way, consuming a large amount of these nuts or seeds is unrealistic and will always throw off your omega ratios. You know, it's just a food that we would not have been able to procure large amounts of in nature. The positive takeaway is to make sure you are consuming quality animal foods, maximizing conjugated linoleic acid while minimizing linoleic acid. And even if you do consume too much omega-6s on occasion, you can by all means balance that with some fish consumption. And omega-6s are a much less dangerous aspect of factory farmed meats than the agrochemicals, the herbicides, the fungicides, and pesticides they are filled with. So yes, vegetable seed oils, are absolutely poison, but not only because they are high in this linoleic acid, they also contain many chemicals that were either sprayed on them when the, the crops were grown or something added during the processing. And then, you know, these animals eat that crap and it's even worse. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon. Of course, share the video if you can. If you guys want to support me further, definitely check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, down in the description below. You can also go to Frankie's Free Range Meat for high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. You can go to Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products and frank-defano.com for a free carnivore diet meal plan and to learn the top five carnivore mistakes. Thank you.